again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week, we're looking at bass lines. I'm going to give you a very simple walking line through the tune Autumn Leaves, and then we'll work through some of the basic concepts that I'm using, which should help you come up with your own lines. Okay, so first of all, here's the bass line played along with the backing track. The track, the sheet music and the tab are all available to view and download over at TalkingBass.net so just follow the link in the info below and you'll be able to play along. Now as I mentioned this is a very simple line just using a couple of basic repeating melodic patterns. Once you have those patterns under your fingers you can start to experiment and add more and more figures in there as your vocabulary develops. So first of all let's just briefly look at the tune. Autumn Leaves is one of the most commonly used songs when it comes to learning jazz and with any jazz standards, it's worth looking at the harmony and getting a feel for what's going on in terms of the basic chord sequences and key changes. Autumn Leaves is pretty straightforward in that we have two main tonal centres, one in B flat major and the other in the relative minor key of G minor. So we start with a 2 5 1 progression in B flat, that's C minor 7, F7, and B flat major 7. Then we have another 2 5 1 in G minor, so that's A minor 7 flat 5, D7, and G minor. The E flat major 7 in between there helps to pivot between the two keys because it's chord 4 of B flat and chord 6 of G minor. If you're wondering what I mean by all of these numbers, we're looking at the chords in a key and I have lessons devoted to all of this here on YouTube. Basically, think of the B flat major scale, then number the notes, and we can build chords on each of those notes, which gives us a palette of chords in a key. Now, I won't delve any deeper into that here, but I'd definitely check out the other lessons that I've got here on YouTube if you're unsure. Now, I'm going to keep this lesson as simple and short as possible, so I'll very quickly introduce you to the two main patterns that we'll be using for the bass line. For ascending lines, I'm using the scale degrees 1, 2, 3, and 5. And for descending lines, I'm just coming down the scale, so root note, 7th, 6th, and 5th. And these two patterns work incredibly well for chord movement by fourth. When I talk about chord movement by fourth, I'm talking about the root movement. So if we look at the first two chords, we have C minor 7 to F7, okay? So think of the root movement, C to F, okay? Don't worry about the actual chord quality, the major or minor, just think C to F, okay? So if we were to think of, let's say, a major scale, C, D, E, F, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's our fourth. You should know a you know, a perfect fourth pattern by now. So that's movement by fourth, whatever the chord quality. So even if it was C7 to F minor, or, you know, C major 7 to F major 7, it doesn't matter what the actual chord movement, the chord quality is, that's the root movement by fourth. And these two patterns that I'm talking about will work perfectly well over that. And it just so happens that in Autumn Leaves, there's lots and lots of chord movement by fourth. So because I'm just talking about scale degrees or intervals by number, we can just apply those numbers to any type of chord quality. So when I say 1, 2, 3, 5, if I was playing using, let's say, a major scale, we'd have 1, 2, 3, 5, okay? So it's the root, the second, the third, and the fifth of the major scale. If we were talking about a minor chord, a C minor 7, we would use the appropriate scale, in which, in this case, it could be a Dorian scale. So we come up, one, two, we've got the minor third in there, and then the fifth. Okay, so we just use the appropriate scale or chord tones for the actual, uh, for the actual line itself. But really, we're just talking about the numbers. We're just talking about the scale degrees in there. One, two, three, five, and then when I talk about coming down the scale, one, seven, six, five, again, you just use the appropriate scale. So, as an example, let's look at the first two bars. We've got C minor 7 to F7, so it's movement by fourth. So, I come up, 
on the C, it just so happens that that's chord two of the key, so that's gonna be the Dorian scale. Don't worry too much about that right now, but we have one, two, three, and five. So you really need to know your scales and your arpeggios for this. So we've got, that's the first, second, third, and fifth degrees of that particular scale, and then that leads us nicely into the F. Okay. Now for the other line, the descending line, the descending scale, let's say that we were on the B flat major 7 to E flat major 7. Okay, so let's say I'm up at this B flat here, up at the third fret of the G string. I can just come down a B flat major scale. We're in the key of B flat. So B flat, come down A, G, F. That's those four notes in the bar. It leads us nicely into the next chord, the E flat. So you can see that when we're descending and the root movements by fourth, a scale works really nicely and smoothly leading into the next chord. And when we come up, C to F, let's say, we've got this nice little line leading up to it. So now I'll just work through the bass line one bar at a time and I'll give you a running analysis of what's happening in there. So we start at the C and we're moving to the F. Always look two bars at a time. You want to see where you are and where you're going because we're going to be having that journey. So we've got C to F, okay? And this is going to be taking place over a C minor seven. Now think about what the uh, key is. We're in B flat, so we're on chord two. Now it just so happens the second mode is the Dorian scale. Don't worry too much about the modes. Just get these lines under your fingers so you know what works over a minor seven, okay? So, I'm going to ascend to that F. This is one of the first decisions we have to make. We have to think, do we go up or do we go down? Very, very simple, uh, you know, choice there, up or down, but that can make a big difference to the notes that we choose. So I'm going to choose to go up, okay? So we're going to move from the C up to the F, okay? So think about what the ascending line was. It was going to be one, two, three, and five, okay? So when we apply it to this, we have C, D, E flat, G, okay? So that's using the Dorian scale there, or a minor seven arpeggio with an added second, whichever way you want to see it. Up we come, and then we're at the F. Now again, like I say, we look to the next chord. We're on the F, and we're gonna be moving to the B flat. Again, it's root movement by fourth. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that when I say root movement by fourth, I am talking about it in ascent. That's how we measure these. If you look at the F to the B flat there, third fret D string to third fret G string, you can see that perfect fourth pattern. But if we were going down, there's the B flat down there. It looks more like a, a perfect fifth pattern. So that's why we measure the actual root movement in ascent. Doesn't mean we can't go down, it's just that in terms of actually seeing what the, uh, what the root movement is, we always think of it going up, okay? So I'm on the F and now I want to get up to that B flat. So again, I'm gonna ascend, that's my choice. I'm gonna go up, so I'm gonna think one, two, three, five again. So this time, F7, we're gonna be using the F mixolydian scale. So F, G, A, C, B flat, okay? So we've got two lines there. Okay, so both of those lines are the same. One, two, three, five, but we're using the appropriate scales. Okay, so now we're up at the B flat. So I'm kind of running out of room. I could go up, but I'd have to move all the way up here. So I'm thinking, I'll go down, okay? So B flat to E flat. So let's look at what that would be. You know, if I measure it lower down here, again, it's a perfect fourth. So I'm gonna move down. So we'll use the descending scale. B flat major, we're in the key of B flat major. It's a B flat major scale. So I just come down, B flat, A, G, F and it leads us nicely to the E flat. As I said, when you use ascending scales like that over a root movement by fourth, it leads nicely into it. So, B flat, A, G, F, E flat. Now, I'm on the E flat, let's carry on going down. Let's have a look at the next chord. We're moving to the A minor seven flat five. So if we were to measure that, you can see it's not really a fourth, it's actually an augmented fourth, the E flat to the A. Now don't worry about that, that's because of the key that we're in. This, uh, this root movement by fourth is not necessarily always going to be perfect fourth. It's always going to be dictated by the key that we're in. It's always going to be diatonic. Sometimes you're going to have perfect fourths. Sometimes you're going to have augmented fourths, okay? So we're on the E flat. We're going to be moving a fourth. So I'm going to come down. Let's use the scale again. This time E flat. We're in the key of B flat, so it's going to be E flat Lydian, but we can use the same pattern that we've already used from the B flat. Lydian and major, there's only a uh, the sharp four in there that's any different. So I'm coming down, E flat, D, 
C, B flat, and we've reached the A, okay? So that gives us the line so far of Okay, and we're down to the A. Now, in terms of the fingering of this and all that, don't worry about that too much. I mean, I've given a sample fingering in the actual, uh, in the tab there, but, you know, whatever the notes are, you know, you just go for it. You have to know these uh, arpeggios and scale patterns in many, many different ways. You don't want to limit yourself by just learning one particular pattern, you know, so thinking, you know, so that no matter where you are, you're limited by that pattern. You don't want that. You want to be able to play that pattern like that, or maybe, you know, however, however um, is needed at that particular place on the neck. So, you'll notice I'm using several different fingerings here. So now we're on the A minor 7 flat 5. So where we're going next, we're going to the D. Well, what do you know? We're moving up a fourth again. So, I'm going to use 1, 2, 3, 5. So, in this instance, because we're in uh, on chord 2 of the minor key, we can use a Locrian scale. Now, don't worry about all that. Just think of the arpeggio, so A, C, and then that E flat there. So we've got the flattened fifth and the minor third, and we're going to put a flattened second in there. That's what we really need for it to be uh, chord two of uh, G minor, okay? Because G minor has got the B flat in there, okay? So we've got this pattern of root, minor second, minor third, and then the uh, diminished fifth. So A, B flat, C, and then the E flat leading us to the D. And like I say, all of this is written in the tab anyway, so you can just work through in your own time. So, coming up, get to the D. Okay, let's go up again. So D up to the G, it's another perfect fifth. One, two, three, five. So, we're on the uh, D7 there, so I'll use a D mixolydian again, okay? You could use, um, a, you know, a different modes based on whether you're using harmonic minor scales and things like that, but we're just gonna stick to a good old mixolydian, okay? So, come up, root, second, third, and fifth. So D, E, F sharp, and then the A leading us back to the G, okay? And now we're at the tonic of G minor, so we're on the G minor chord. So we've got two bar, well, we've got, we've got two bars of G there. So what I'm going to do is because we're not moving anywhere in terms of the root movement, I'm just going to come down the arpeggio. G, F, D, B flat, G, landing us on G again for the second bar, and then we've got the G7 leading back up to the C, so I'm just going to use our 1, 2, 3, 5 again. Okay, just using that mixolydian scale on G. 1, 2, 3, 5, G, A, B, D, C. Okay, so that's the first eight bars. So let's just go through there. So we have... So that's the whole of that line so far, just using the one, two, three, five in ascent and the basic scale in the descent. And then obviously we're just messing around with the uh, with the arpeggio a little on the G minor, but very limited resources there. We're not using much stuff at all, but we've got a bit of a walking line. The next eight bars are the same as the first eight bars, with one exception. When we get to the G minor at the end there. We're going to be staying on G minor and we're going to be moving up to the A minor 7 flat 5. So we're not moving up by fourth. So this is one of the exceptions in here. So when we get to the G, we'll come down the arpeggio. G, F, D, B flat, G. And then we've got movement from the G to the A. Okay, we've got to get there in a bar. Now, it's only movement by a second, you know, just of a whole step. So we need an idea for moving quite a lot in that small area. So, one thing you can do is just think, okay, well, we'll use a little chromatic run-up. So, I'm just going to play the G on the first beat, and then I'm going to play F sharp, G, G sharp, A, to lead us nicely up into it. So, it's just a three chromatic notes moving up into the A. Okay, so we've come down G minor, lean, leading us nicely into the A, okay? So, first, what's that? 16 bars. So, here we are. One, two, three, four.
The second half of the chord progression is pretty much the same as the first, but kind of turned on its head. So instead of starting at the C minor seven, we just start at the A minor seven flat five, but then it's the same chord progression running through. So let's run through those uh, chords there and I can play the same bass line that we played in the first half. So we'll work through that. So we've got A minor seven flat five, coming up the same line, D seven, G minor, and we come down the G and then come back up with with the minor there because uh, that B flat's gonna be there in the melody. So then we're back to the C minor again. Same as in the first half, F7, B flat major seven, E flat major seven. Then we get back to the A minor seven flat five again. D7. Then we've got these two bars, which are a little bit different. So we've got two uh, beats per, uh, per chord here. So we've got G minor seven, F sharp seven, F minor seven, then E seven, okay? So chromatically moving down. And because we've only got two beats for each of those chords, simply play the same note twice. So we just play G, G, F sharp, F sharp, F, F, E, E. Dead simple. Which leads us nicely into the E flat uh, major seven. So we can come down that again. And then we're at this uh, this A minor seven flat five to D seven in one bar. So again, two beats per uh, chord. So this time, instead of playing the same note twice, because there's a movement by fourth there, let's use a root third pattern, you know, just to bridge that gap a little. So A to C, D to F sharp, leading up to G, okay? So we're not using A, A, D, D, we're using A, C, D, F sharp, G, okay? Then we're at the last two bars, so just to bring us back around, we can come down the arpeggio again, and then come up the G7. And we're back to the uh, back to the head again. So that's the whole line. So you want to work through that. Try getting it under your fingers there. And remember, we're using very very limited resources. Yes, it's a very boring bass line, but it is a walking bass line. Once you've got these lines under your fingers, you can start to add more and more lines in there as your vocabulary increases, and you can start to put them in there on the fly. This is just to get you through the uh, through the chord progression and understand kind of what's going on. So remember, we're just using two patterns in there, one, two, three, five, applied to each chord in turn, or when I'm descending, I'm just using a descending scale. That's it. So let's try playing along with the backing track. Now, originally I played it at about 150 beats per minute. Let's try a little bit quicker so you know where you want to get to with this. And all these backing tracks are there in the lesson material over at TalkingBass.net. So here we are, 200 beats per minute. Now, as I said, this is a very, very simple bass line, and yes, you could say it's pretty boring. It's the same lines used over and over again, but it is a start. We're looking at patterns and formulas that we can use over each chord by adapting to each chord quality. You, and you can see the need for understanding your scales, arpeggios, and working on your knowledge of harmony which is how chord progressions work. If you want to learn all of this stuff, I've got hundreds of lessons over at Talking Bass, both in the lesson map and in the step-by-step -step courses covering pretty much everything you'll need to know. So just follow the link in the info below. So as a quick example of how you might use this bass line as a springboard, let's add one more pattern into the mix. So this is, you know, to emulate what would happen if you suddenly found another line that works over these chords. So, Let's look at the C minor seven to F seven. Okay, so again, we're moving up by fourth. Well, there's another very, very popular line that's used in a lot of uh, walking bass lines, and that's this one. We're gonna come up C, D, E flat, E natural, F. Okay, so it's a little chromatic line, so it's a lot smoother. So C, D, E flat, E, F. And you want to learn how to play this in several different ways. So we could play it there, moving on to the next string. So that's third fret of the A string, then open D string, first fret, second fret, and then third fret. Or we could actually play it 
C, D, E flat, E, all on the A string. Third fret, fifth fret, sixth fret, seventh fret, moving up to the F. That's a nice transition into a higher position. Or you could even try C, D on the A string, and then E flat, E on the D string, leading up. You know, there's several different ways to play, and I would definitely recommend trying to learn many, many different ways of playing each of these types of lines, because you're going to play them a lot. So... That's another line that we can start putting in there. So, we could play C up to the F, and then we could even use it over the F. Because it's got both the minor third and the major third in there, it works over both minor seven, dominant seven, and major seven chords. The only one that it won't work over is the minor seven flat five. We have to adapt it for that. So if we we're on the A minor seven flat five, we really want to be using the flat and second in there. So we would play a, then possibly B flat, C, C sharp, D. So it's pretty much the same line, it's just that instead of using that major second, we're using a minor second, okay? So, we can try C up to the F, and then we could play the same line again. Up to the B flat. Now I'm up at the B flat, do I want to come down? You know, I'm just incorporating it into the same bass line that we've just learned. So you learn that as a foundation, you know, and as a springboard for all these other ideas, and then you can start putting all these other parts of vocabulary in there. So I can come up with both on both of those chords, or I could have come up on the C. When I get to the F, I could have used our one, two, three, five. So Then I'm at the A minor 7 flat 5. I could use the line that we were just talking about there. So A, B flat, C, C sharp, D. Maybe the chromatic line again. Okay? So you can just pop it in there wherever you want. Okay? So maybe. Okay, so that was a, another variation on it. I'm just using the same bass line <laughs> that we've already learned and then just popping that other line in there. So remember to like this video if it's helped, subscribe to the channel and remember to visit TalkingBass.net for hundreds of lessons, a free membership and a whole bunch of great bass guitar courses. Follow the link in the info below and I'll see you next week.